What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another streaming tutorial. I do apologize if I sound congested. I am trying to get over a cold, but I wanted to get on here and create you guys a tutorial to show you how you can bring in your YouTube live chat into OBS Studio as well as into the actual live feed as well. So that way when people want to watch it in full screen, they can still see the chat and still understand what's going on. Now, I've made a video on this years ago on how to use that with the OBS Studio custom docs, and that video is still valid. I will link that in the video description below, but this is an alternative way of still doing that, but you're not gonna have to change the URL every time you go live. So this is the way I've been doing it for quite a while, and I wanna share that with you guys today. So there is gonna be a lot of steps to set it up. I'm gonna walk you through the whole entire process, and then once it is done, you're never gonna have to really ever touch it again. And as you can see, I've already got my test chat went through. You can see it on the right hand side. You can see it inside of the stream itself. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set this all up. So hang with me through the rest of this video and you guys should be all set. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go to streamelements.com and you wanna sign in with your YouTube account. Once you're signed in with your YouTube account, we're gonna go over on the left hand side to streaming tools down to overlays. And what we're gonna do is click on new overlay. From here, we're just gonna leave it at 1080p for the resolution, click start, go over to add widgets, go down to stream tools and click on your stream chat. Now for this, you can resize it however big you want it. Uh, I, honestly, it really doesn't matter. Um, what I would do though is just kind of keep it what it normally comes with because we can adjust this later. But if you want to go in there and mess with the overall settings, you can. So you can go in here with the position, size, and style, and you can give it its proper width and height if you know what that information is going to be. And then you can also go into text settings if you want to have a certain type of font, size, centering, everything like that. So you can mess with all that stuff here. And then for your chats, you have different themes. So you'll have the dark chat, which is what I like to use. You have checker chat, which doesn't seem to ever change anything. White chat makes it white. And then custom chat is going to allow you to add in a colored background if you want to. And then you can also have it where messages will be delayed by certain seconds. And then messages will fade after 30 seconds if you turn off the show messages permanently. So I'm gonna leave it on dark chat. And then once you have all your stuff set up how you want it, then go over to save, and then we're gonna give it a name. We're just gonna call it YouTube Chat, and then hit save. Okay, now once you have that saved, then what we're gonna do is download the Stream Elements plugin for your OBS Studio. So for you to be able to get the plugin, you're gonna go to streamelements.com forward slash SE live, and I'll put that in the video description below for you. And then just go ahead and click on the downloader for whatever operating system you use. If it's Windows, you'll click on Download SE Live for Windows. And if it's Mac, you'll click on Download SE Live for Mac. And you just run through the installation. Once the installation is complete, then come back to the video for the next step. All right, so now if we go and open up our OBS Studio, we should be presented with this login screen right here. If you don't see it, you want to go up here to the very top and you want to make sure that you see Stream Elements. You may have to go down to this last option here for the reset the sign in. So if we click on that, it's gonna refresh everything and we're gonna log in with our YouTube account. All right, and after you log in and grant it all the access that it needs, it's gonna to try to sign into everything. So we'll just give it a second, there we go. All right, so if you go back over to the stream elements on the top, Go down to se.live docs and you have activity feed, multi chat, and also the YouTube chat. So we're just going to keep the YouTube chat selected and these other two options unchecked. Now, what we want to do is bring in that chat overlay that we created. So we're going to go down to our scene that we've created, click on the plus, go up to browser, click OK, and then we're going to go back to our stream elements. And this is the one that we created for that overlay. So we wanna make sure that we save it. And then we're gonna go over to the chain link here, click on it so that way it copies it. And then we're gonna paste that in right here. Now we wanna then change the width and height to 1920 by 1080. 
click OK. And we'll give it a moment, and there's our chat. Now, the chat does look kind of small. That's because I haven't changed anything on it. And you can adjust that by grabbing any of the corners here and making this bigger. You can move it anywhere you want to, or you can adjust the settings in the actual overlay settings that you had in the stream elements overlay. So I'm going to try to do my best to get this kind of back to where it was. There we go. So if I was to go back into this overlay, and if I wanted to go to position and size, and let's say I changed this to 450 by 720. If I save it and go back to OBS, now it's bigger. So that is how you get your chat all set up in OBS. Now we're gonna have to go into YouTube and set up your stream so that way you can pull that data in to your actual chat and into OBS. So now we gotta get to our YouTube live dashboard. The easiest way to do that is to just click on the live dashboard button here and it will bring you right to your live dashboard. You can go ahead and give it a title and everything like that. Uh, you can set up all of this information down here as well. But the key thing is you wanna make sure that the privacy is set to public. That way, the chat that's over here is gonna show up inside of the stream itself. So once you have that all set up, we can go then over to OBS again. We're gonna to go to manage broadcast, select existing broadcast, and then find the one that you had created. Then we're gonna to go to select broadcast and start streaming. And we're gonna start pulling it in. So you can see this, it is waiting for your stream to go live. If we look on the back end, we're waiting for this to show up that is going live. So we'll go back over to OBS and we'll see if anything has changed. Okay, so now we got the chat showing up here. So now I'm gonna go back over to here inside of the live dashboard and say, hi, this is a test. And you can see that it shows up there. You can see it shows up here. Now the only thing, the only drawback to this is it does take a few seconds for it to show up here. Now with it being small like that, that's because I made this chat box so large. So you would have to go in there and kind of adjust the settings in the overlay. So if I was to go back to the overlay itself, you can see that the chat is really tiny. So if I go to like text settings, I can then change the text size to whatever I want it to be and it shows it in real time. So if I like how that looks, then I can hit save. I'll go back to OBS, we'll give it a moment and I may have to even refresh it. So if we click on here, we can refresh the overlay and we'll see if it changes anything. Boom. So there you go. So you can adjust it very quickly, but it is all running through the web of stream elements. And then with this also being only showing like the chat here, you can't type in here. Yeah, the only way you can type is through the live dashboard like this. So a couple of drawbacks, but it is super simple once you get it started. Once you have this all set up and it's working, Every time you start a new stream on YouTube, you're not going to have to adjust anything. It's once you get it set up once, it's done and you're good to go. If you do run into any hiccups, though, definitely let me know and I could try to see if I can figure out a fix for it. But I have not run into really any issues at all using this method. So I definitely say give it a try and see how you like it. Well, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial, guys. Hopefully you did find it helpful and useful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. But I'm also going to link my older video in the video description below as well for you guys to check out. That way you have two methods. This one obviously is using stream elements, so it's pulling it from the web and the data that it's able to pull from your YouTube when you connected it. And that's why it doesn't require you to have to change the URL every single time. The other method requires you to change the URL every single time. And that's kind of where there's some drawbacks. But... Both methods do work, and if you run into any hiccups on either one, definitely let me know in the comment section below of either video, and I'll do my best to try to help you guys out. But thank you so much for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.